Prince Rain Evermore dreams of a better life. His sister smiling more often, his mother not so prone to fits of anger and weary sadness. His father doesn't daydream of the family he's lost whenever he looks at the throne. His familiar Arix is free and happy and doesn't treat him like a child or ghost. The Holy Mother once told him that his father had to bear many burdens in silence with pride. He dreamed of a time where he could share those burdens and perhaps lighten the load. Of a time where he didn't have to worry of assassins in the night or of the quickly cutting courtesan carved words in the day. These were nothing but no nothing dreams, however fool's errands that he didn't know where to begin accomplishing. His younger sister had called him naive. Rain had called her a cynic. The capital was full of cynics and sycophants, too ready to give up or give in. Rain couldn't be that, couldn't afford to. If he gave up, then the Evermore family was doomed. So he smiled when he felt like screaming, he bowed when he felt like fighting, and he trained until his fingers bled, even when he felt apathe apathetic. Mother had called him hopeless, worthless even, when she thought he couldn't hear. Rain hadn't said anything to her then. Instead, he went on a diplomatic mission to Astrakhan and alert Keeper Sunstone's true identity, hiding as a serving girl in one of the few taverns in the city. He had played every game in the book to earn that. He thought he was never good at politics, but he proved himself wrong. Proved mother wrong too, he supposed. Father had called him childish, which was fair. He was still young after all, but he'd worked all the same. After all, to be childish is to make others laugh, to be a source of levity in the winter months when the weather was forbidding and cruel. It was to put even the most hateful of rivals at ease. Father ruled through respect. Rain wanted to rule with respect and a kindness that his father's generation could ill afford. Arax, his familiar and maybe his only friend, called him triumphant and mortal. Arax, who for all father and mother's pretty words was bound for endless suffering, had told him, Bonds be damned, I'll protect you stupid princeling, and in return you'll make this world a bloody better place. If it wasn't for Erex, Rain wasn't sure he would know, have known where to start. He was sure he would have given up somewhere along the way. But now he knew there was a kingmaker in the capital, and more were coming. This was his chance. His chance to change everything. And welcome back to City of Mist Kingmakers. I'm your Master of Ceremonies, Ashley, and these are my players. I'm Cassidy, playing as Matthias, the Rift of Typhon. Hello, and we, no, not we, only I, only I am playing Adelaide. <laughs> the royal we, the royal we. Yes. <laughs> Sonia, and I'm playing Emma, the Rift of Athena. Hello, I'm Simon. I'm playing Aaron, whose rift is King David. I'm Selena, and I'm playing Mara Galanis, the rift of Hades. And where we last left off, you met up with another group of kingmakers, met Dalavier the familiar, and things got tense! But we pick back up not in the cathedral, but uh, on the road. You guys having already left. Uh, like Dalavier has had another cart prepared for uh, the other cake makers, and you're sort of riding caravan style uh, to the front and back of each other. So I can choose between Ryan an awkward ride with Ryan or an awkward ride with Adelaide. I think me and Ezekiel are just gonna go and sit with his bud Ryan for this cart ride. And Ryan, as always great with that with Ezekiel 
Autumn helps entertain as well. In the other cart, because we can't avoid awkwardness, Dalavier is stuck sitting with Cades. You know, I think you two would be friends if you just give it a chance. Uh, we've tried. The chance has been given and lost. I don't think you caught my sarcasm. No, I did not. I made sure to sit on an opposite cart of Jane. Oh, uh, Jane will sit with uh, Autumn and Ryan then, because she likes them fairly oh, well. That means I get to avoid Maddie. That's nice. <laughs> the tension has ratcheted up. Uh, <laughs> Jane is probably sitting there cooing over like, oh, that's so cute. Absolutely. Uh, and... And then sitting on that cart, moving people over, uh, Mary Kate will be on the other cart with uh, with uh, Emma and Adelaide. Really, you stick her with us? Absolutely. And she's not that bad. She mostly reads. If she's not asking you incessant questions that just probe the line of being uh, sociably acceptable. Hmm. Questions oh. such as? Oh, you know, questions about your rift. Questions, like, the questions about your rift getting closer and closer to, oh, how did you get it? Uh, she does not ask that directly, though, but they're just like, you know... It'll get there. You can feel it. Adelaide's just gonna... She's gonna break she's, it. She's, she's gonna tell. She's fairly socially intelligent, so for the most part, if she senses tension, she just reads. Right, I she just reads. She's like, oh, these people will not be inclined to listen to me right now. Later, then. Later. <laughs> Later. Promise and oh, a threat. Uh, Mary Kate, what was the occult club like back? At? I mean, we investigated powers, how many rifts there were on campus, why there were so many. Why were there so many just at our school? We've been putting we together. Never... We had a whole big clues board. Nina helped sometimes, if only to get me to stop pestering her. There were not so many at um, Germany. No, there weren't a lot where I come from either. And I live in Chicago, and that's a pretty big city. It's quite odd. Perhaps drawn to specifically that That was one, That's one of the theories we have ongoing. Either there's something just naturally odd about that place, or there's some evil machinations going on in the background. Well, I'm assuming they're evil. If they're machinations, usually they're evil. Nine times out of ten. <laughs> And I mean, pestering the staff that are riffs a lot, too. Because they definitely, Jesper definitely knows something. He gives me this infuriating smirk every time I'm like, hey, you know why there are so many riffs on campus? And he just smiles and goes, fate. Mm -hmm. In that way that yeah. implies there's more going on than fate. Uh, who said that? Jasper. Oh, Jasper. Is Jasper one of the ones that went on the trip with us? The infuriating librarian man sitting a cart back. Oh, yeah. No, I was, I was asking that out of. Um, I think it's about time that we ask these questions, but like, you know, really ask them. You don't. You do not think that I have not tried ever. Do you know my reputation? Yes. Persistent. But do you know my reputation? You're very. I have persistent. done every trick in the book three times. Jasper is just infuriatingly good at being like, hmm, yes. Things I don't, I know that you don't, ah. Now that we're stuck in this unknown world, don't you think he should actually give us answers? I tried. He did the same thing. He was like, nodded sagely, like he was giving me some, like, sage advice there, and just was like, I've already told you. It's fake. <sighs> Maybe you'll have better luck. Maybe he just doesn't Maybe like me. Which is Maybe entirely possible. I do push buttons. Maybe there's a rift out the Maybe that's what he's trying to say. Oh 
my you god, that, would, that would be a pun that he makes, wouldn't it? I'm mm-hmm. betting it is. I'm betting there's a rift to fate, and probably someone on the bus, consuming like all the rifts in the school got on one bus. Not all of them. Pretty much all of them. Mm-hmm. It's quite odd. I Wait, mean, do I, out of character, do I know that, um... I know what you're gonna ask. No, you do not dad. know that the head of school is a riff. Okay. I mean, there's gotta be more out there. I, the I mean, I I've know the there are. Season. I've interviewed half of the staff. I know there are other rifts that exist that are not in Foxbury. Hmm. I mean, I did encounter some when I lived in Chicago, just not nearly in the same, like, new, like, not nearly as numerable as in Foxbury, it, all in the same sort of space at the same time. It's weird. Dude, Maybe we should just pack the cold. I don't know. Do you guys like cold? Is that why you came to Wisconsin? Just because you migrate to cold weather? No. Well, I'm old. Yeah, oh, that seems unlikely. It's oh, but I bet you're right. That's smart, though, that Jasper was referencing a rift to fate. Mm. God. Stupid. You don't have to ask him more about that. <sighs> I will. I will pin that down. I'll pin that man down eventually. Pop it up. Time to eat. So. Um, you guys sort of ride on the cart uh, in ways. Uh, what conversations are being struck up along the way? I'll just talk more about um, the occult club and theories about the myths and stuff. Mary Kate happily chit chats with you about that. She seems she has a lot of ideas. Yeah, I think some are more absurd than others. Uh, and she she is free and willing to give information on other rifts that she knows about that aren't in your current group. Like she freely talks about Nina's powers, uh, and talks about how Nina's really good at like crowd control is the exact phrasing she uses. What do you know about? Which one was the morticianer? Gabriel Price, right? I don't think I've met him. I usually just I take take an interest in the rifts that hang around the college campus. Hmm. I don't remember any of these names. So if he's an adult, you could probably ask Jasper. He seems pretty in the infuriating no. <sighs> well, he is an adult. Why won't he give me straight answers? What do you know about Kai's powers exactly? I know he can fly. I know he can make other people fly. I've seen him make his sister fly. And it's not really- I know that. I guess flying is not exactly the right term for it. Loading? But semantics, I suppose. It's more like they're walking on air. Nothing else? Interesting. I mean, Kai was pretty adamant about not wanting to join the occult club. So all the power, once I get a no, though, I, I tend to try not to look into people's powers after that, even if I am infuriatingly curious. <laughs> and it can never be abated. What exactly gave away that I was a rift? Certain behaviors, besides if you hang out the library a lot, a lot, I can generally gauge reactions to Jasper's presence. Oh, yes. If you uh, squint at him a lot and you're like, what's, what's different about him today? <laughs> That's kind of a, kind of a giveaway. And also, I mean, not to say that I've used Maddie and the fact that he glowed before and followed him around the school to see who stares at him, but I have. <laughs> Definitely done that. You know, technically, that's called stalking. <laughs> Investigatory, uh, you know, uh, this investigation. Without a warrant. You're not, you're not a legal investigator. That does not count. Actually, she pulls out a card that says, Mary Kate, private investigator. Thank you very much, I am. Is that valid? 
Absolutely it is. Of course, it's not in the state of Wisconsin, but it is in the state of Illinois. Not valid. And not many people check. How old are you? 19. That doesn't seem legal. Well, well, I got the license, so. How? Oh. I guess I can be particularly convincing sometimes, you know? And you couldn't convince Don't worry, I didn't use story. my powers to get the thing. I wouldn't abuse them yeah. like that. Illinois is a weird place. I- Illinois <laughs> is a weird place, especially Chicago. That's just out of character. I think Illinois is probably just a weird place, let's be honest. I believe even as a private investigator, do you need a warrant to, tr- to follow someone? I don't know. Only if you go inside their private quarters. If they're walking around in public spaces, no, you don't. Hmm. Besides, you need a warrant here? people watching isn't illegal in any state. True. Should be. What would all the writers do, though? They'd never overhear interesting conversations. I would... And they were roommates. And oh my god, true. they were roommates. <laughs> and it's not our fault if people talk too loudly in public spaces, act weird in public spaces, glow, you know, among other things. Besides, I've memorized the law eh, when I was like 11, so I know every legal loophole there is and nothing I've done has ever been legal. At least nothing that can be proved. Wait. Now you have to memorize a whole new legal thing. I do, and I'm so excited about it. They just set up a court system, too. I know! That's so cool. Be in the throes of literal history. Mm-hmm. I think we are history at this point. We're gonna make history, that's for sure. That's what I mean. We make it. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. Though I am an investigator and I do have the bones of a cynic in me, I prefer optimism to pessimism. I would love to see how similar the laws of this land are compared to the laws of, um... Well, I mean, I know murder, thievery, and all the basic stuff is illegal, obviously. I mean, I turned in a bunch of bandits, but, uh... Interestingly enough, the the death penalty is only for a very specific crime, and that is treason. You can commit murder, and you'll be just locked away for life. But if you hit murder and treason, or another serious crime and treason, off with your head. But it's not, you can't just be treason unless it's like war crime. Yeah, uh, there's this law that I once came across where if a person dies while you're committing a crime, like as an effect of you committing the crime, then you can still be tried for murder. I wonder if that applies here as well. And we'll have to ask about all their self-defense laws and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, they seem pretty loose. We did just fight, our group just did, like, fight a bunch of bandits. Yeah. Of course, yeah, we, bar- we barely injured any of them. Fighting. The worst some of them got away with is, like, some broken bones and bruised uh, innards because, I mean, Jasper was a rhinoceros. Ryan has super strength. I have a feeling we're going to be doing... Layla chose to I abstain can't... so no one would go crazy. Fighting. Her powers are intense. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling we're going to get very well acquainted with the murder laws. Ugh, I hope In self defense, specifically. The sight of blood makes me queasy. Same. I'll we'll have to get used to it. Well, I hope I don't have to. At this point. Yeah. Again, I prefer optimism to pessimism. Besides, my powers make it pretty easy to avoid bloodshed. I'm really good at talking down, people down, you know? Hmm. And if my powers don't work, I think Autumn can do, manage what I can't. It's definitely stronger in the persuasion department than I am. Hmm. Autumn and um, Jane might have a lot more in common than I thought originally. They both mess around with love. Yeah, 
don't know. Motion powers always seem pretty intense to me. I don't really like to use my manipulating one all that much unless my life's in literal danger. Usually I can just rely on the fact that, you know, I can make myself really good at sneaking around things. Yeah. That is a very useful ability just to be good at anything you try. Really good at memorizing facts. And that, like, if you switch the things you memorize, don't you memorize fade. languages? Nope. Have you memorized yeah, I can speak for you. Constitutional expression. Ah, no. I haven't learned German yet. What language have no, you learned? the same. Chinese, Russian, and French. Hmm. Huh. French was just for fun. Chinese and Russian uh, was more of a, like, a, oh, these are other big countries. Does that make logical sense? Oh, yeah, I should probably I put German on the list as well. I like learning things, just anything. Yeah. Though I haven't had a lot of I free time. I think German. <gasps> That'd be great. Even if I can learn good from books, I de you definitely learn languages better from a teacher. Speaking, Real yeah. practice. I can't make myself better at something if I don't have a baseline in it. Mm. Yeah. That's why I've tried pretty much everything under the sun once to make my I'm gonna be better at this power more effective. Have you tried skydiving? No. I don't want to do that without proper training. That's fair. Besides, I'm kind of scared of heights. Oh. Well, maybe you want to be scared of heights if you tried it more. Can you make <laughs> yourself really good at getting over your fears? I mean, that's called bravery, and it's an emotion. I can't make myself emote better. Hmm. I see. I have things I like and I have things I don't like. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just wondering how far your powers stretch. Uh, they don't, they don't they don't touch emotiony feely things. Okay. Just physical? Yeah, if it's like more of a concept type thing, my power's not very good at grasping that. It has to be like a, a physical skill. Mm -hmm that you can practice and get better. I can't do something if I actually wouldn't be able to do it. That's understandable. Has to be within reason. I mean, it certainly means cer makes certain things a lot easier. So what happened like memorizing to stuff and getting good at school. I feel like you memory. Need Memorizing things, lock picking, hacking. I know a lot of stuff. Stealth? That's not useful. Could you General make yourself persuasion. really good at learning how to make pop lock pick <laughs> and then um, still be able to do it afterwards when your powers fade or you switch to something else? Not really. It don't work like that. I could actually train myself in a skill the normal way, but I'd have to do it. My power has finite in the number of times that, or in the length of time that I can make myself good in a skill. How long was that? I mean, I've never really reached the duration. I just know it's there. What's the longest time you've gone? Uh, probably you stealth skill. Two hours. How'd you find that one out? Mm. Sneaking around my parents' workplace. Is it nearly night at this point? Oh, you're traveling at night. You only ever travel at night. Okay. So you're talking and you guys eventually head to on sleep. I'll make sure there's no night hawks before I fall asleep. Yeah, uh, and you all head off to sleep, except Maddie. Mm. You, can see, you can see kids and tell... Alvier and the other cart, just like whew, both being awake and on the same cart. <laughs> Maddie's sitting there. How do I get Cades out of this awkward situation without him potentially turning into a butterfly? <laughs> Cades come over, comes over to the back of the cart and just like gestures for you to come to the top. Entertain me, please. If I sit one more moment in awkward silence with Delavia, I'm going to explode. 
I, like, help him into the back of our cart. Oh, thank God. It's a little cramped in here. I'll have to go back eventually. Yeah, I don't know what I can do to entertain you. I'm not in the greatest mood right now. Oh no, I can tell. You're a broiling yeah, little storm of emotions. Am I entertaining? Um, oh, but I thought of my question. Oh no. Okay. What's the thing that makes you happiest? Besides Ezekiel. Oh, that's you a cop that. that is a cop out. You Answering cannot. your child you is a cop make... out. I know that's the, that's number one. What's number two? Shit, that's a question. Running? No one ever actually liked to run. <laughs> it does like to run, but it do I don't think it makes him the happiest. I'll let you think on it. If you have an answer, feel free to tell me. I genuinely- I'm- this is a hard question. Can you imagine if someone came up to you just as a human being and was like, what makes you the happiest? You'd be, you'd be reeling for a minute. Yep. I mean, you looked, you were very tense about the fact that I had that question looming over you. I figured I'd use it on something nice. Oh, that's so sweet. You're in such a crappy mood. Oh, that's less sweet. So, what makes you the happiest? I mean, you could just give me a list of general things that make you happy. I do. I do like running. It is very freeing. Things people can do for you. Gifts you've received in the past. The type of personality you like to talk to. I like... I like it when people tell me about their experiences as a human being. Mm, that's tough. I'm not a human being. I, I, their experiences overall. Because, you know, it's kind of cool when you get someone else's perspective. Like, you know, sometimes I don't exactly get it, but, like, it's not my thing to get it. I'm not supposed to get it. We're different people. Do you even know what if I'm saying? Yes, even if your sense? perspectives don't match up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's cool that, like, that they offer that to you. And that, especially when you're close enough with someone, that they're just totally willing to give you that perspective. Mm. Interesting to note. Well, it's only fair that I answer the question kind. Things that makes me the happiest. The open sky. I like flying. I like when other people fly with me, too. Do you want to? Runs us asleep. As long as you're not a butterfly. I don't have to be to fly. Okay. I, I've told you how I make people fly. Yeah, okay. Um, but, but before we do that, he's gonna he's gonna tap Ryan on the foot. Uh just letting you know that we're going out for like two minutes and we'll be back. Just okay. keep an eye on Alright, uh, Captain. And then and then yeah. Okay. Jump off the cart. Okay. And he jumps off the cart. And uh, you almost hit the ground and then you f float at the right last second. This is freaking awesome. And he uh, is standing. He doesn't summon his wings. And he's like, let's fly. And it takes you up and up and up. <laughs> and it just lets you fly around for a bit. The only song that's playing in my head is Never Ending Story. <laughs> Uh, and then he eventually leaves you to land. Definitely, for some reason, I imagined some, uh, imagine the, uh, imagine what, what makes you the happiest? You need a happy feeling to fly. What was the line from Peter Pan? Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Think happy nah. thoughts. I mean, technically that, that is true, but that's more on my end of the spell casting thing than on yours. And it's luckily, cool. I've lived a very long life, so I have a lot of different emotions I can draw on. Can't even imagine this isn't her. 
I mean, we perceive time differently than you. I can't imagine... Well, I can. Uh, you know, growing old, dying from old age. I honestly think I would hate to live a very long time and I'm ready. Eh, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, the worst thing about it is that you keep interacting with the same problem over and over again and you continue to see it. I, Especially I when you live along life among creatures that live very short lives in comparison. Repeating each other's as mistakes endlessly forever into history, into the ails of time. Not my favorite thing. It's definitely not my favorite thing. That is one of the biggest things back where we're from. Everyone, every history teacher's favorite line is, you need to know history in order to prevent history from repeating itself. But I find that to be a load of BS. Because what are they doing to prevent history from repeating itself? Oh, be educated, but I can be educated while still allowing history to repeat itself. Depends People, on your education and just, your level of platitudes. I'm quite pessimistic about your Earth. Yes. How long do humans live there? Average. Where you're from? I'm like 90 is a good age. It's pretty long for a human. Yeah. I mean, the Empire's average is like. 50. Uh, Bellinaren's average is much, is much lower. Uh, I think Andrathus is the most long lived. Somewhere around 60. Yep, there are the, the pluses to modern medicine and all of that stuff, but you guys, like, it's just. You know, not a lot of really pretty stuff has happened in my life. Like, like people are all like, ooh, I'm so worldly, I... Or like, ooh, I totally get it. I'm like, all oh, like uh, the Instagram thing. I'm woke AF. Like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You sympathize, but that's it. Sorry. And then, hmm. Oh, you're in a mood. It's fine. Everyone has baggage they carry around with them. Just... Biggest pet peeve. My number one pet peeve is people telling me, because I'm young, I can't be a good parent. And maybe it's not in those words, but I'm a great dad to Ezekiel. I'm better than my dad. I didn't have one. So... That's a, that's a pretty low bar there. Yeah. I'm I don't understand the concept of, like, parenting it all I can't help there. Those don't have lineage or that sort have of thing. You... We're created from magic. You just we just exist. Things? New Fae aren't made that often. Most of us are pretty old. Right. I mean, there's a ceremony to summon New Fae, but it needs a lot of energy. Energy that, uh, don't exactly have left lying around. Newest Fae was probably... Mm, it's a pretty big deal, so like probably 500 years ago. The baby-making machine is broken? I mean, not really. Usually we only make one new Fae every century or so. A century is like a year for us. A new baby every year? And we don't really need... Why would we need thousands and thousands and thousands? We live forever if we're not killed. Or afflicted, but... So, one year for, you know, several thousand years, several hundred thousands of years, and quite a bit of us, yeah. there were. That makes sense. It's different from humans. The difference not better or worse. Don't let Dalavir hear me say that. But it's different is not better or worse? Is that like a bad perspective to have? Like, oh no. He doesn't hate humans! Faye, yeah, that's pretty bad. 
It would be like a, a courtesan not hating an Orokar. So we're regarded as just like horrible monsters. Yes. Humans as a whole. You're not really human. I'm human. No, you're not, but okay. You're not fully anymore. Humans use very specific sort of magic. You're not. Yet. So you're not. Still pretty. At least similar. not the not the same humans as here. Maybe you're like normal back on your earth, but I get the impression that our, everyone has these fancy abilities. That you do. No. Very few people have these fancy abilities. That doesn't make me less human. It's not like there's anything wrong with not being human. No, there's not. I'm the I'm the stunning picture award of Here's why you shouldn't be human. Haha. <laughs> I could throw some Absolutely. real nasty insults at you right now. Go ahead and try them. I'm Come on. Moon, but not not in Give me one give me one. No. Give me one. Here's why you shouldn't be human, so you can be a disgusted, wi disgusting, winged insect. Oh, you're butterfly fear. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Why would you... I don't even need a response to that. That's great. I'll let you wallow in your misery. There's nothing wrong with not being human. No, there's not, but... I have a very human little boy, and... Okay. Very human, very crazy ex. But, you know. I mean, you don't have to be human to have positive or negative interactions with humans. I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse. I'm very much struggling with this right now. I mean, we don't have to talk about how. You're not. How about this? You're not human in your in magical sense. Magic I'm is magic not human like. Human -like. -like. Okay. We can go with that if that helps. It does help a lot. Didn't mean to drop a bomb, it's just- well, Your magic doesn't feel like that. Do you know how- It's you're more like- it's, You're more similar to a fae than you are to a human in terms of magic. You specialize in a thing. The magic draws from the tangle. Very similar. Okay. Yeah, that does make sense. And humans... They don't work together with the Tangle to use magic they take from it. So we're working with the Tangle? Yes, you are not actively murdering magic every time you cast a spell. Oh, so is magic a non-renewable resource here? It is the way humans use it. Uh, For the most part. There are exceptions to every rule. I should know. Again. Don't ever hear Hermes say that. He'd talk on for ages. Oh, those humans stealing our magic. I've heard him say those words far too many times, but I like it. We don't get them. But, like, they are, aren't they? It's not like they can help it. No, but they could be more cautious and more Could caring. they? Could they? When they ran around slaving them and the only way to defend themselves was with magic, the only resource they had. Okay. It's not like I we mean, didn't push them okay, to the brink. Okay, just saying I'm not familiar, I'm not super familiar not. with your guys' history. This is just a conversation I've had a lot with, I'm not gonna say peers, because we're really not fellas, I suppose. So you're kind of, you're pro everybody do what the fuck they need to do? I'm pro let's not be dicks to each other. You know, I'm starting to like you a lot more. Too bad I'm a familiar. Just do your fucking thing. She's not a candidate. What a shame. Besides, I think I do terrible without responsibility. I'm bad with responsibility. Of any sort. So you say that? And you also, you're like all this tough guy shit? But I don't really buy it. Hmm. Nah. I'm pretty bad with responsibility. Seriously, if you want horror stories, ask Dalovia. We worked together a long, long time ago. I guess you could say we were co-workers. Ha! Ah! Okay. Okay. All right, then. Co-workers. That was a... Impassion statement. Yeah, you were. Uh, well, 
Dalio could probably tell you more. He's more involved with the NLR Aravun stuff. Uh, but elemental themed Thay are paired with emotional powered Thay. Because we represent two signs of the same core the physical and the non physical. So you guys were actually co workers? Literally co workers. A pair that did not get along. We have never agreed on anything once. I mean, it doesn't help that I find Ooh. most of the things he's done in his life fairly abhorrent, but it's fine. You know what stings? And you probably already know this stings. But he's like the Emperor's familiar, right? Yeah. That stings. I hate humans, but now I'm bound forever Yeah. to serve the thing I hate. The literal punctuation the zenith of the thing I despise that's like far crueler than I originally thought of course it's like a lifetime of slavery so far crueler than that is like like bound to the only immortal human the only master that will never change Starting to see a little bit of his perspective, like fuck humans, we don't we don't do this shit. But like, let's not do the whole like, ooh, cut them off from the their. I don't know. I don't know. This this world is weird. It has so many parallels to where we're from, but it's still like different. Weird. It's like all of our history just smushed together and kind of just thrown at like a canvas. So you just. Oh, all of the atrocities ever committed, ever? Here you go. All of it. Right now, in that one time period. All of it, right now. Have fun. Except for the skin color thing, which I commend you guys on. It really loses its meaning when you live with a people that can just change. Not to be condescending, but early humans did develop a lot of their ideology from interacting with us. Just... Except for the Vestra. They went to the Null, and we do not go there. <laughs> that is the no-go zone. No zone. Even before our cards, no-go. <laughs> if you smart. Okay. And there are some very dumb humans and fae. Hey, I'm feeling a little cold out here. Uh, you haven't gone to the Denal, so I don't know why we would feel called out. The worst place on Orthara. I mean, you might have to eventually granted for your new responsibility, but I really hope not. In any case, I'm gonna go back to having a staring match with Delavia. Cursing his grave. Have fun. I can't go anywhere without really, really, really awkward interactions. And I want oh, That wasn't awkward. That was like back. a. Nah. That wasn't awkward. That was me sharing my perspective. No, this wasn't awkward. But now I have to go back to that. Point. <laughs> points at the cart. <sighs> oh, we can, can switch. That. No. Adela is asleep. She's done it consistently. Oh, she's old. Aren't humans supposed? Aren't older humans supposed to have like right to chit chat? Yes, right to chit chat. Right to overstep emotional boundaries. That's a whole like thing. Maybe, but then being like you're young, so. I mean, she Clearly definitely can't. didn't say that. She called me a child. I have a kid of my own. She she's... said that you. Or a child to her because she has kids older than you. Still, she's overstepping her power. As a grandfatherly figure? She's. She continues to undo my parenting. 
which is not going to teach Ezekiel anything good. She's done it a couple of times, maybe with little things, but it still bothers me enough to where I said something about it, and she's like, oh, Yeah, and I understand oh. nothing of parental relationships. I understand that you're both trying your best there. And that you come from very different places. But, you know, sometimes having empathy for a person doesn't mean you'll ever get along with them. I feel like I get along with her so much better. Just, I don't know if there's an if. I feel like that that relationship is going to get better. I think that's one that we're going to, I'm going to be able to talk out. Well, if there's one thing about human, you're ve- humans, you're very optimistic about interpersonal relationships. I've given up. Oh, that's genuinely sad. I'm Not about you guys, you. but just... <sighs> it's so much easier to hold a grudge when you don't view time linearly. Anyway. Okay, then. I'm gonna go now. What? Why don't you do the... Do you want a lollipop thing? Because that seems like to be, like, the ultimate way to reach out and be like, hey. He does have a damnable sweet tooth. But no. No? Not even gonna try it? I've known him for thousands and thousands of years. You try to be friends with a person enough times, you know when to stop. That is fair. Uh, And he flutters away. Not literally. He doesn't summon his wings. But the imprint is there. And you go to sleep. Well, you know you don't. You stare at the sky, forlornly and bored. Uh, And people start waking up as the morning comes. And do we, like, pull over to camp? Yeah. Let her rest for the night. Before he goes to sleep. Is the road safe as long as I stay on the road? Uh, um, Ruin will twist. In the daylight, it should be. Just beware bandits. So I think you can handle yourself from that perspective. Yep. So you go on a run. Yep. Uh, and everyone else, uh, Dalavir kind of gathers you on a circle and asks, uh, pardon my curiosity, but uh, I know you've only been here a few days, and you're new to the whole kingmaker's business, but I'm curious to what traits you're all looking for in a leader. Not a dick. That's a good one, yes. Resilient. Resilient. Athletic. Confident and nice. Kindness is very good. Not being able to be pushed over easily. Are you looking for... Someone who's experienced as a leader, or are you going to take your chances and anyone like, who meets the personality traits? Um, probably someone who has at least a little bit of experience in leader, whether that is like, I don't know, being a leader of a town or... Like, like local leader versus... Local yeah. leader, yeah. Interesting. It's just, I'm curious to know what you'll look for in that. That Sense. way they're not thrown too far into the deep end if they win somehow. Someone who ain't rich... Mm, yeah. Maybe someone who doesn't have, like, a very huge perspective. Or at least have experience. Is this, is this a conversation I'm here for? Or is nope, you went off running. Okay. You're not here. Probably, probably uh, what about someone... you, uh, Sir Aaron and Lady Mara? Sir and Lady? Uh, I've not really uh, thought about picking you guys as leader in a while since uh, other things have come up. Yes, yeah, I... Heard of your recent troubles on the road, but it's good to think about it. So you you have criteria in mind, so if you find someone who meets your criteria, you know why. You know what they're meeting up to. And also your standards, so you know what you want. I had this question before, but who exactly decided that a bunch of random strangers should pick the, the succession of an entire country? Elshana. Hmm, you just all kind of rolled with that? That magic. doesn't sound weird at all. Her dying and... magic was very powerful. Wait, was she a fake? Wait a second, Mary Kate. Uh, Elshana hey. is a is a fae. Uh, Delavere says, looking slightly somber. 
she was the, uh, I suppose you could say queen. And she used her last spell to read a prophecy through all of Althara. You've all just kind of rolled with the whole random strangers picking succession thing. There is literally nothing that anyone could do about it. They could kill all of you, and more would appear, because fate has been set in stone. Strangers? I mean, you can certainly try, but prophetic magic is very, very powerful. Who's just going to be like, oh yeah, these random... How long would it be before more of us showed up? I don't know. It could be a thousand more years for for all I know, but... Alright, so you could just like keep telling us, you know what I mean? It wouldn't work very well. There's always consequences for interfering in fate. The more you try to stop it, the more sure it is to come true. But it's fate, so... It it's would like, come true anyway, uh, so there wouldn't be really any consequences, because it's happening the way it's supposed to anyway. Yes. If... But you push your luck. Alshana's magic is very strong. Only she can know what she wanted with it. Mm. So technically, if we uh, if we choose the wrong person, the prophecy says to rise or fall. Mm. You could very well pick someone that would lead Arthara to total imminent destruction. But as guides, as your guide here and a representative from the Empire, it is my hopeful resignation that we will keep you all from picking a person that would lead to the total destruction of everyone on Arthara. What traits do you see in a good leader? I think every good leader needs a certain amount of pride. They need to be able to make hard decisions when nobody else can. They need to be able to bear hard burdens. They need to not be able to break under pressure. We should be humble. Yes. Uh, there's a certain amount of pride that you need to be a ruler, or else you will stumble and fall. But you should not never have it, never have anything in too much. Any personality trait you can have too much of is... makes you a faulty ruler, makes you a faulty man. Hmm. That's my opinion. Now, I'm not a kingmaker. It is up to you. If it's still, you know, having the opinion of the people we're picking out a ruler for, kind of be important. That is true. People, including all the Fae. Not many true Fae left. Yeah. You mentioned something about there being two of them. Silvis mm-hmm. and Delta. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't exactly describe Silvis as the world's most well behaved Fae. You said he was in the forest. Yes, he quite literally runs a criminal underground. Mm-hmm. And Delta, you say you haven't seen in a while, right? In a very, very long time. Do you have a general idea of where they might be? No. I'm afraid I don't. Alright then. Oh, but you, you guys have- promise that we'd have to find a fae. One fae, and so far you know of two. Silvus, who- has not had the glowing recommendation of his peers in Delta, who has mysteriously vanished from the face of the continent. Oh boy. Are the ones that are born, like the Fae that are born, do they... The Fae that are born, do they just get snapped up by humans and turned into familiars? There hasn't been a new Fae for 500 years. And the Binding has not ritual existed that long. Oh. If another one appeared, would it be snapped up by a human? I mean, likely, but it's unlikely a new one would, could be uh, summoned. Why? Oh, right, because the magic is weaker. Not enough magic. The, and there's no no fey. You'd have to find Delta or Silvis to get them to perform the ritual. Oh, it has to be a free fey to form the ritual? It has to be a certain type of fey. Silvis and Delta would both fit. 
And then they'd have to collect enough magic to be able to perform it. Interesting. Silvis is a child of words, and Delta is a child of emotion. That is useful. Thank you. That's very useful information. I was a child of Earth when I was a Fae, but as a familiar, my power is quite weakened. How many child of categories are there? I mean, how many types of Fae are there? You can be of something, and you can be a child of something. Uh, being a child of something typically simply means you have a stronger tie to magic. And being of something... Weaker tie to magic, but you're still magic. Mm. Interesting. But you know. Does anyone else want to jump in here? Mara, Aaron, Adelai? Adelai is still pondering over how she can fix this. That's fair. Mara, Aaron? I don't know what to say. I mean... I don't know what to say either. It's just... I don't you have any questions you want? You burden questions you want to answer? Um... What were the... Were there any bad rulers in the past, and what were they like? Of the Fae? Uh... Or of anyone in general. I think my opinion of human rulers would be unfair, as I have not lived under any of them. Okay, um, thanks. Uh, well, there was a ruler before Alshana, but that was quite a long time ago. And she is very much long, long dead. Which is fortunate for us. Her name was Pella. Child of Fire. And Queen of the City of Fire, where the city gets its name. She made many rash decisions. Similar to the Hawaiian goddess, Pella? I don't know what huh? that is. Familiar. No, out of game. They are spelled differently. Oh, dang it. Sorry to crush your theories. <laughs> um, but it so- sounds the same. It sounds similar. Especially with the fire part and the attitude. But, as uh, you guys are asking these questions, Matthias, you were running and running and running for a while, trying to sort of work off some access to steam, when sort of all at once, you and everyone, Emma, Mara, Aaron, Adelaide, you... Find you are, you blink, and everything around you has changed. You are left suspended in the clouds, in a sea of endless blue and white. You blink a few times, and you look around, and you come to realize you can't see the ground. The only thing you can see is sky stretching on forever. You feel the feeling of falling, though you are not falling toward anything. And at the same time, all of you catch glimpses of different things. We will start with what Matthias sees. Matthias, your vision is pulled on deep underground, far from where you are currently. There is a form of a small child with pitch black eyes crying, running through a maze of rock and magic. Something is laughing at him. 
and that is the glimpse you see. Emma, you see a golden crown shattered into a thousand pieces, like glass, and a short serving girl scrambling to pick them all up. Footsteps in the distance, warning ominously of someone coming. Adelaide, you see a room covered in spider webs. A creature is in the middle, surrounded by tall, bowing figures, of which one hides a dagger between his fingers. Mara, you see a man completely made of silver and shadows, carefully knocking on an iridescent barrier, the shoreline just beyond it. Spiderweb cracks forming with each careful knock. Aaron, you see a familiar hue you would recognize pretty much immediately as Cades, looks exactly like him. Pink and smiling, entertain a group of watching passerbys with shows of magic somewhere along the coast of Andrathus. And you blink, and you're back in your body as you're back where you were, the vision is gone. Oh. Weird. Did you guys just get like a vision thing, or is that just like a side effect of my powers? I honestly thought it was because I was old, but maybe. Was, like in the sky. Mary Kay nods. Yeah, I definitely just saw something. What did you see? Well, like there was a big sky. sky, and I was falling, mm -hmm. and there wasn't any ground, and then my vision was snapped away to a person I didn't recognize. Same. Probably oh, in the castle. My, my person was probably in the castle, considering they were holding a crown. I honestly thought I saw a cult. All what? right. Creature in the middle. Mm -hmm. Things around them. Couldn't see them. I think they were hooded. I don't know. And one of them was holding a dagger, so... At the cult. Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> At least there were no children's sacrifices this time, right guys? This time. Yes. Ooh. I don't know. From what I saw, maybe. More references <laughs> to the our previous D&D campaign. That can't seem to end. Uh-huh. In a very D&D <laughs> fashion. Anyway. Uh, Aaron and Mara, do you share with the group what you saw? Yeah. I saw... Literally the weirdest thing, this dude, with every knock, he broke his barrier, and I don't what? understand. What did he look like? What? <laughs> what did he look like? Da Delavere is, like, staring you down, like, duh, what? Um, I don't know. It was weird. Uh, I could barely see who he was. Like, does he look like a human? Do you have skin? Yeah, he looks like ears? I think. Okay, more things to report to the Emperor when we return. Apparent aura car sighting due to vision on coast. Aura car sighting? They tend to test the barrier's strength now and then. It's not uncommon. Oh boy. Does not seem like a good time for us to be here. Hmm. <laughs> Maddie comes tearing into the middle of the campsite. There was a kid underground. They need help. Oh, you got I'm a vision too. What? Yeah, um, Mara there got one of an aura car knocking at a barrier. Mary Kate leans forward. Do you think these are visions of things that are happening right now, or are they like feature mm -hmm. visions? I would say right now, that dude looked like he was about to go into that animal or whatever it was. Cade steps forward, but that doesn't make sense because Aaron saw me in his vision and I'm right here. And now someone's going around disguised as me. Of which case, mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. I think Could I it be of the future? Oh, God, that's, that would be 
Maybe things were supposed to prevent because I saw a Salbana, I'm, I'm assuming a Salbana child, running around underground with uh, echoey laughter chasing them. Ooh, that's not scary at all. Clearly upset. They need, like, help, like, now. So, like, is there a place that we report these and they'll go do, like, a welfare check? <laughs> I don't think is there's anything support here? like that. Uh- for CPA. visions. For LG protection I service. certainly hope it's in the future. If an Oracle is tapping on the border and actually breaking it, then we might have time to send a patrol to stop it. If this isn't the present, then we have a problem. They might be scattered at different times, also. That is some in the past, fair. Visions some do not have to happen linearly. Was there a golden crown shattered at the castle recently? No. Or like any time? Man, mine is definitely in the future then. Not that I know of. Might not be that castle though. We know there's the Salvana kingdom and we know there was Fae kingdom. Was it a human girl? Yes. Uh, It was a human. Uh, She wore sort of dull red colors. Asia? What do your servants wear in your castle? Like, what colors? Uh, commoners tend to wear browns and blues. Special occasions, they'll break out the bright blues and things. It's the Empire flag okay, colors. not your castle, then. But there what is color? A... a uniform? Red. Sounds like it was an Andrathis. Flag colors, they're red, gold, orange. No. Maybe these people are important. Perhaps. Like, we should probably figure out where your guys', your guys people are. Based on, like... Well, Cade's gestures to himself, well, I'm right here, so well, you found one. Uh, got yeah. one. <laughs> Look at you, Aaron. Great job. You found yours. <laughs> High five. Now we can... Just- Keep you around. My ball. I was the person in your vision, as you said. I oh, personally do not want to the conflict. Out. Yeah, so Into yeah. A- we did it, boys. Something something <laughs> happened. I don't know what that was. I mean, I certainly hope if these are visions of bad things you have to stop, that I am not a bad thing that you have to stop. Oh, God. Well, I make people <laughs> laugh. Not exactly a cry. Maybe, maybe it's like your bad like humor. Do you have any? I do have a lot of bad jokes. Maybe that. Maybe my humor is the crime. Awesome but like, that... you also like tend to glaze over the whole like, ooh, the other half of my powers is mania. Ah, but I don't use that at all. Now no, it's there. Was I maybe using a mania power in your vision? Maybe this was an alternate reality. Maybe it was symbolism. Or something. Read into it all you like. Ooh, better. Mm. Uh, where is the draft? Southwest. Hey, oh, northwest, coming. excuse me. I think we might have to make a pit stop away. there at some point. Nice. Where are you going? To play with my son. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys have these conversations, and then unless there's anything you want to do, you get back on the cart and you get ready to go. I will approach Adelaide. We will do this while you are on the cart, so you approach Adelaide. I apologize. I think I reacted a little strongly. You just hit a nerve, and that's it. Well, I apologize for hitting that nerve. Thank you. And then he will go and get on the other cart. (laughs) 
with Ryan. Yeah. Who is continuing to trying to be your best friend. I'm also, I guess, I don't know which part I was on. I guess we're going the Ryan cart. Yeah. Uh, but you guys arrive in the next town of Ironhaven within the day. Uh, and it is less of a town and more of a fort. With a name like Ironhaven, that makes sense. And you walk, the, the cart gets waved in, uh, Delavier and Erin both, like, raise different symbols to the guards across closed gates, and the gate is opened, and the, the cart slowly trots in, uh, in town to see, in time, to see a crowd gathered around a raised stage of which two guards stand on either side. One man is on his knees, head on a block. Oh no. The other behind (laughs) him raises an axe. What is happening? Comes down. What is happening? Head beheaded. You guys, remember, the only thing that you can be executed for for death sentence is traitor. Remember? She said this earlier. Covering mm-hmm. the balls. Yeah, I immediately scoop Ezekiel up and, like, like face, shoulder. I look away. As I was going to be behind my t- Maddie. Oh, good lord. Yeah. It took you guys a while to realize what happened, though, so everyone saw that. I, uh, try to hide my face because I'm secretly laughing. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, oh, I'm trying to hide my face from the horrendous scene. No, I'm actually, I'm giggling. This was great. What? Maddie, Maddie, like, scoots Ezekiel over and then vomits on the ground. You guys have your various intense reactions to seeing a human die in front of you. What the absolute fuck? This is not- oh, Body being is carried good. away. Head in a box, being away. So Ezekiel definitely saw? You pulled him back dressed in time before the moment. And he's a little I'm young sure. to grasp exactly what just happened. But he, like, senses your, like, everyone's tenseness and immediately starts crying. Hey, dude, it's alright. I don't like this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> The cart keeps moving. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. That, uh, that was... Why murder. did people do this? Execution? I thought the only thing you could be executed for is treason. Treason. According to... Um, Dilavier looks back at the... the you all. Uh, yes, there was an execution scheduled around today. I didn't realize we'd come in time just to see that, though. Uh, uh, the man there is a convicted murderer. Treason as well. What did he do? Treason. Murder. Killed knights on the border. Um, Slaughtered them. Quite heinously. Okay, okay. Like, can we, like. Oh, you I asked. You literally asked. I did. I won't ask anymore. Like, like, I'm, I'm exactly. not against curiosity, but like, context clues, chick. Oh, context clues. You're very overprotective, aren't you? Maybe do humans from your world have a different like grasp of violence? Yes. I just puked. Oh, d- so that's um, a yes then. I mean, we don't do beheadings anymore. We haven't done. Yeah. That. Yeah, we haven't done those since the late 80s. When there's a death penalty, it's by poison. A poison that works fast. Or like headshot, I think. Sometimes works fast. Electrocution. Hmm. Sometimes works fast. Ugh. What? Yeah. Electrocution. Not, not something as cruel as and not very sharp blade heading towards your goal. 
Although in the medieval time, seems fairly sharp. Very long time. It only took one shop. Just saying, yeah. didn't like Star Wars or something come out the same year that like? Yep. They the last, something like that. The last yeah. one happened. I think it was in. We're I not like in the Midwest. Yeah, we're not like think... in a place to judge. Yeah. I don't think for this one because. You know, it wasn't public, you can right? get it wasn't public. Oh no, it wasn't public at least. Yeah, at least that sense. Don't do it in public. Yeah, that makes it so much better. I hopped down with Ezekiel and like Look, I'm not I'm not saying that it's better, it's just I hate the death penalty, honestly, but they well, this town does not have a court cathedral for us to stay in, so we'll be standing with Mage Commander Jenny, so you can direct all of your complaints, I suppose, to her. Another mage. I don't really feel that complaining about that. Yes, she's the, the Baroness of the town, as well as the Mage Commander of the Order of Steel. Jenny Morais. Uh, and the, the cart, uh, Pulls over and he, um, Erin will lead you most of the way. You have to walk because, uh, it's inside this fort of a city where it's mostly upstairs and through, uh, stone walls that, uh, you are led to, uh, the center tower of which, uh, a woman in knight's regalia, blue uniform, uh, marked with, uh, patches of steely armor, a sword at her side, a shorter, like a short sword, not a great sword like Runes, uh, though she has two of them, as well as a shield attached to her arm. Uh, and she opens the door very promptly uh, and greets you all with a, a nod. You must be the Kingmakers, if I'm correct. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you, Shadowhunter Knight Urin. Uh, I am glad that you have arrived here safely. My name is uh, Knight Commander Jenny Moraes. You all seem rather struck speechless. Weren't expecting my as a uh, opening, if you will. That opening, specifically. There were a little opening. Oh, the yeah. execution of Carlos. We ain't used yeah. to it. Most we don't people. need to know names. <sighs> well, he's gonna be a figure going down in history, killing over 20 knights. Maddie's oh, just gonna else? make, make a afraid? face, throw up a hand, and just be like, I'm going for, we're going for a walk. Anyone wanna join me on the walk? And then I will join you. Again? I wouldn't recommend walking around the city. It's a little dangerous. Can I have a lie, reach into a purse and pull out some headphones? <laughs> sure. <laughs> they also, well? Uren, Alicia says hello to you as well. Um, she wishes you safe journey to the rest of the capital. Though she did request you report more promptly and include more details when you report a murder. And how is Aslia doing? <sighs> as well as she can, getting up there news, you know. I believe the last thing she said was, Oh, man, why will my son not just come home and say hi to me sometimes? I believe those were her, like, exact words. Why won't you come talk to me more? That feels very pointed. Oh, it certainly is. I have to listen to a complaint for hours attend on the night's meetings. You get to hear it from me. I'm going toward Ashpool. Oh, then you're going in the right direction, then. That's like, when's the last time you saw your mom? I literally cannot go three months without visiting my mother. So. Uh, it's been a year and a half. That's ridiculous! That's nothing. Be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I have a job that takes me all over. Besides, it's not like I don't get letters for her. She is my direct superior. Ooh, that's mm. one best thing, so that's gotta sing. She's the Knight Commander of the Order of Shadowhunter Knights. Even a family business. I see the family business. I suppose. 
Oh yes, she was so excited when I told her, hey, guess what's Shadowhunt tonight? First encounter of the Kingmakers, your son, and guess who didn't immediately spend a travel stone to tell you about that? Your son. Shut up, Jenny. I'm gonna tease you until you get some more gray hairs on your head, and since you're bald, that means I'm never gonna not tease you. <sighs> Maddie will nod and then reach into Ezekiel's bag and pull out a gray cor- uh, marker. And just draw one line on the side of Wayne's head. <laughs> Cap it. <laughs> and put it back in the Oh, bag. I'm gonna like you already. Come in, come in. And she gestures for you all to follow her inside. By the way, Adel, I handed the headphones to Maddie. Maddie put them on Ezekiel. Though, I did... I was going to ask you something about Mr. Benny, who is is more talking to you, and you don't currently have a familiar, and Mr. Benny, did, unfortunately, possess one, and none of my unbound knights are willing to take her, since her magic was directly involved in the murder of 20 of their comrades. I was wondering if any of you would be willing. What kind of magic? Uh, she can control steel. Control metal. Oh, dope. I kind of oh, like that. It sounds amazing that? when it's yeah. not, you know, used to stab people. Of course, yeah. Catalina herself had nothing to do with directly with the murders. Her magic was borrowed. And she is, I guess, she is, uh, well, her magic essence wasn't exactly treated kindly, you could say. Uh, and Dalvir actually, like, looks on his eyes sharpen. She's fading, then. Uh, yes, which is why I was looking for a keeper, and we need one in short notice. Maddie, how do you feel about, um, a permanent babysitter? Sure! I'll take another babysitter! Oh, then you be can with I? it. Can I? I'm gonna turn to look at, um, Cades. Is this a good idea? Your guys' decision. I nope. Okay, hey, I'm asking your opinion. We well, play- Catalina's fading, so she's either gonna die or she's gonna get a new keeper. Fine, I'll Ooh. do it. Probably have a lot more. Food. Okay, if you then. don't feel like doing it. I'll do it, Maddie. No, I'm kind of into it. The okay. idea of being like, hey, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Plus, we can actually treat them respectably, <laughs> unlike how others might. What is the trade-off of this, though? What does this part of this bonding that we will not like? Uh, Mm -hmm. You you bond to Faye. You you get their magic power added to yours. Uh, You get the commanding essence. I feel like there's another catch you're not telling me. I mean, what do you want me to say to you? I'm gonna turn to Kate. What are they not telling me? Well, besides, you're owning a person. Whether or not you phrase it nicely, it is still slavery. It is still slavery, but it's a saver. Does she want to be saved? Most people would prefer death to slavery. Let's ask her. Where is she? She currently can't speak because she is falling to literal pieces. (laughs) I'm going to turn to... Delavere? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes? No. What's your vote? There are not many Fae left, much familiar or otherwise. So if she was is... comparable to speak, maybe you could mercy kill, but that was not the time to consider death as a kindness. Okay, I'll do it. Fading is slow and painful. Okay, now I'm motivated. Let's go. <laughs> uh, and uh, Johnny leads you to like the basement area of this tower, uh, where on a like a couch bed, pretty much. Uh, a tiger looks like it's made of separate steel plating is uh, breathing very heavily uh, if it's possible for metal to look pale it does uh, and unhealthy Uh, it's a little rusty it's a little rusty, it's a little green around the gills I I Uh, hand Ezekiel to Adelaide uh, and Johnny will um I can perform the binding. 
haven't done one in a while, so I hope this goes well. Uh, and she gra- and she like, Catalina has the, since she's in animal form, has the red string with the uh, little emblem on it. Uh, her emblem is uh, the, a symbol of like a, a lightning bolt. Uh, in metal, and she grabs that, and then uh, she gestures for you to grab her other hand. I grab her hand. And she says a bunch of words in a language you can't recognize. Her eyes glow, and you can feel this energy pass between uh, Catalina to to Johnny, to you. Uh, And back. And there's a blinding light, and for a moment everyone is thrown black, blinded, you can't see anything. Uh, And you get get up, uh, (sighs) <sighs> uh, Catalina is in a more human-like form. Uh, orange skin, still with stripes, black stripes like a tiger, short black hair, and little cat ears that stick up, and as well as a tiger's tail that wraps around. Okay. And she carries a, a dagger that has a, a pattern like a lightning bolt on it. I'm gonna reach out my hand for a handshake. One second, I need to oh, catch my breath. You're good, take your time. I was not pleasant. Oh. <sighs> oh, where's the keeper? Any, you, you, you. Handshake, yes. Mm. And can I have your name, keeper of mine? Please don't call me that. I'm just Maddie. Maddie, then, if that is your preference. Oh, Delavere, hey. Nice to see you're still doing well. Nice to see you're not dead on the floor, Catalina. <laughs> you know, better times, better keepers. I really hope you're better than the last one. I think you can... I don't... I mean, low bar. Set a real low bar, but I think yeah, you'll I be fine. I don't plan on going on a murdering spree. Well, that's... Please don't. That's good for me. Oh, that's good for me. <laughs> Yeah, why did you guys... I'm gonna look right at Adelaide. Why did you say my name? Of course I was gonna do it. This was really impulsive. This is bad. It's okay, though. We're gonna roll with it. Why did you do that to me? Well... Adelaide just glances over at Ezekiel real quick. It's okay. It's okay. We'll make it work. Uh... This has clearly made something off it. Did you not want to be my keeper? What's going yeah, on no, here? It was like really no, wishy keeper, washy for a minute. No word. No word keeper. Uh, yeah, like I don't like, I don't, I'm not, not into that word. Uh, what would you want me to call it then? Just, just call just... me Matty. I okay. Try. Matty, you are my keeper. That is the job oh, description. I hate, hate it. I hate that it's true. But it is. Say friend. We're not friends. You're not met. gonna. Yeah, we're not friends. I hope yet. so. You seem quite nice. You do seem yeah. quite lovely. Uh, no, I don't know we, much about you, but we don't know much about each other yet. You say acquaintance. Acquaintance. Yeah, Matty. acquaintance. Acquaintance, Matty, who holds my life essence in his hands ah, and can give me no. binding orders. <laughs> no, <laughs> but that's true. Okay, so I'm allowed to true order you it. around. Yes. First order, give me your honest opinion about any idea I have. Any idea anywhere. Express yourself. There you go. Express yourself. Is that a good first thing to say? That's okay, that, that's very nice. See, you're already proven yourself to be one of the bad ones. Because it's I mean, been it really won't weird. help because orders are. You don't have to specify I am giving you an order for it to be an order, but. You know, they not a trained really? mage. Am I a keep, getting a keeper who's not a trained mage here, Johnny? You could find one planet. night, one night, one. Even for I'm temporary, you could have switched the bond later. This, this is. They weren't uh, exactly holding kind are. opinions of you, Catalina, and they're not exactly mages. What do you mean they're not mages? They have magical. We're not from uh, here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not from Excuse me, girl. I'm having an existential crisis. I'll be right back. <laughs> so am I. Well, I'll see you later. Yes, <laughs> we will talk. After. <laughs> hey, Dalvin, I'm gonna. I am going to borrow your ear to rent and vent at you now. 
Okay. <laughs> and he, and Elvira <laughs> takes Catalina to one side of the room, who immediately, she doesn't start crying, but she does, like, whisper yell very emphatically. I'm sorry. Oh. And then I will walk away. Allies go and try to listen in. Okay. Which uh, one? Catalina, which one? The, uh, Catalina and Dalvir? Yeah. Uh, Catalina is like, a kingmaker? Really? Really? That's. Oof! Okay! Oof! Oof! Don't hyperventilate now. Uh, are you alright? I almost faded into a million pieces because the humans were too stubborn and selfish to give me an ounce of empathy, so you. You can take the. the Am I alright? and shove it down your stupid ass. Sorry, didn't mean that. Well, I did. But not at you, specifically. Ah, words. It's all right, Catalina. You're alive. You're fine. <laughs> Barely. Well, can you tell me more about New Keeper Man? Certainly seems entertaining, at least. Looks like he'll be an easy one to tease. Please do not go teasing your keepers. Why? It's a good way of testing your boundaries. Do they react positively to mischief? Do they react negatively? Where's the line? When can you cross that line? <sighs> can you please not try your luck? You almost died. I am aware and I am processing my feelings through brutal mischief. <sighs> yes, well. <laughs> Most of the pranks are going to be directed at you, FYI, Delavere. Just for future reference, you can't be mad at me because I've already told you. Nope, don't open your mouth again. You can't be mad at me. No? You can't. It's binding. It's done. <sighs> Whatever you say. Thank you very much. That's sort of the conversation that you get over there. Catalina just freaking out in her own little way. But unless there's anything else. Nope. We will pull Wait. away. I go Wait, to I'm... the closest person to me that I know. Who's, who's so the probably, closest probably, probably, I'm gonna probably grab Aaron actually and pull him aside and be like, "What did I just do?" I have no idea. I was perfectly willing to do it if you didn't want to. I kind of wanted to, which is the horrible, horrible thing. Oh, I yeah. Just did. You notice kids did not follow the group downstairs. And maybe I, I saved sense. her life, but maybe I just damned her for a life of horror. Oh, no, okay. We just need to make think... I don't know if that's how it works. We can try. Right? Or just like yeah. give us free will. Like so you don't just... actually have to serve your me. You can just do whatever you want. Well, try that. See if that works. Your orders to yeah. follow my orders. That seems like very backwards. Wait, what if you? What if you give them an order to never follow your orders? What will happen then? Or just give them an order to just be, do their thing. Just do, do their thing. Do what they want, yeah. Yeah. This is weird. I put myself in a weird situation impulsively. I do that far too often. I need, I need help, guys. This, I, I, I the, the, the person, that we're resting with. They said they can switch purposes. So if you really don't feel comfortable doing this, I will take over if you don't. I don't know if... We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. And I as hope. that decision is made, we'll pull back from our adventurers. Back a hundred years in the past. Delta didn't consider himself a patient fae. He didn't consider himself a forgiving one either. So when he came across a human with blank green eyes standing alone in a field of dead knights, he stopped her from making the final blow and killing herself along with the others. He removed the familiar magic curse laid upon her, anger flaring. This time, when he met Delavier at their usual spot, after dropping the girl off with the Lotus Tribesmen to be healed, he had already chosen his words. Really, Dalafe, you can't hurt humans yourself anymore, so you get you trick one into doing it for you. Alivier looked 
unconcerned, as if he didn't understand the problem. He never did. Weakening the army by killing knights. I thought it was rather self-explanatory. Self-explanatory? You made a girl a murderer for nothing! Weakening their armies will do no good for us if we can't break the binding. The only thing that helps is the Oracos. The fact that Dalavier had no response to that only made him more angry. So calm and collected. Did he have no empathy? No, of course he didn't. Delta had been deluding himself by thinking a taste of his own goddamn medicine would humble him at all. Would make him see reason. I don't see why you're so mad. They were knights. Worthless humans that would capture or kill you if they found you. I don't care about the stupid knights, Delavier! Delta exploded forward. I care about you throwing temper tantrums by killing innocents, by making an innocent commoner kill innocents, robbing someone of their free will like it's nothing again. Delavier sneered. So what? Nothing of great value is lost, and the more infighting I create, the easier it is for you to travel. Delta felt something in him snap. No. No? I can't keep doing this, Delavier. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. Working with you, working for you, not when nothing changes. Dalavier looked only slightly shocked. You're breaking your promise. Delta shook his head. I'm going to keep trying to fix this. But I'm beginning to see I can't do that with you. Not when you haven't learned anything. Not when humans are still worthless to you. Not when you would have things go right back to the way things were. Selbana slaves at your hip and me being banished again. I'm done. Delta's voice had grown to a shout as his magic withered around him. I'll be back for you, Darvian, like I promised. But not until you've learned to see the world for what it is, and not what it was. And with that, Kingmakers Episode 9, Present, comes to a close. I've been your Master of Ceremonies, Ashley, and we will see you all next time.